Sports Hour, supported by Albertsons, and brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Luke Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, make your crypto play today. Buffalo Wild Wings. And by Omni, Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. It's Victory Monday. And it's Victory Monday! It's Victory Monday! How are you? How, look at what a, what a crowd. Is this because it's uh, Christmas and the Star District is so beautiful and decorated? Or is it because it's Victory Monday? Victory Monday, there we go. And not just any Victory Monday, because the hated Philadelphia Eagles are now having defeat Monday night. <laughs> and uh, and look at our special guest, the Cowboys All Star Center, Tyler Biadish, is here with us today. Woo! Thanks for coming. Absolutely, absolutely. I know you had nothing else you would rather have been doing <laughs> on a Monday evening. <laughs> no, man. I'm, so I'm grateful to be here, man. Uh, we, me. we are grateful to uh, we're grateful to have you here. So, um, have you ever been since birth? In a third trimester? <laughs> yes, actually. No. You, you have you? <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, it's such an interesting way for Mike McCarthy to have divided. Yeah. He didn't say I've divided into thirds. <laughs> you know, he said trimester. Know, okay. He, he did spin that one. Like, he kind of right. did. But so now, you're, now you've launched this last part. Mm -hmm. And so how big a way to launch it was last night? Still one game in a regular season. Yeah, I think it was huge, um, especially, you know, coming off of the, you know, three-game stretch that we had before. And, um, you know, that's a big stretch. I mean, obviously, like, getting your bodies back, too, and, um, you know, refocusing. And uh, we ended that uh, second trimester uh, great. So, I mean, um, but, yeah, going to the third one, especially division opponent, you know, there's a lot of line on the line, obviously, and stuff like that. But, like, to come out like we did and have that tenacity and um, play complimentary football is huge. It was a little feisty out there last night, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, it always is. Well, it's not always. It's not always, and it, and it goes in degrees. Well, and, and your group especially, it seems to me there's two or three of you <laughs> who, seem to, who seem to be enjoying uh, making sure that the team has a little bit of an edge. Yeah. Am, I, am I off base on that? No, I mean, I think, I think our team has that... Uh, you know, that attitude that, um, you know, we, we always talk about in the old line room, too, because, I mean, you know, it's in the trenches, and it's that, you know, owning the line of scrimmage. And obviously when you play a team twice, you know, there are there are rivalry matches, and there are, uh, you know, there's a lot of matchups that you have, you know, you want to, you know, succeed in here or there, or however that might shake out. And, and you always have that more of an edge going into that game because, you know, you know more about them than, you know, you did before. So, um, but, yeah, there's always, there's always a little bit of a, you know, you know, shit talking here. And I mean, I just love the way your, <laughs> just love the way your cheeks get red and your smile kind of when you talk about that. Now, so so what happens then when you're getting ready to play a good team that you don't know very well? You know, and that's I think you know you you go off a you know you have unscouted looks sometimes, and uh, but then you go based off your fundamentals fundamentals in uh, in your system that you have in place, and that and that goes with kind of every defense they you know, give you, and you have your checks, and you have your run solutions, you have your hots and dots, you know, that McCarthy says, and stuff like that, but, like, it's it's the pure execution based on, like, the rules that you have in the offense, you know, talking, talking offense specifically, but um, but knowing that you can trust your rules and, um, you know, trusting the running backs and landmarks, or knowing, like, you know, when, you know, we're going to hit this down the seam, or, it, like, the play clock, and how, how fast the play's going, or, you know, just helping out the reads of the QB and all that stuff, so, um, but yeah, Unscott looks can you know that's you know McCarthy talks about it a lot like the first four games of the year like the you know somewhat of the hardest ones because it's like you don't really know what they're gonna give you because you you know you're playing the division opponents the first times and all that so um, but yeah no division you know it could be it could be challenging for sure but you know obviously you know you just keep on adapting to the game and what it brings you so you guys have been thrown unscouted looks a lot this season how do you feel like over time you guys have uh, developed and grown in that in-game adjustment? 
Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we've had a, a lot of different looks over the past, I think, two years. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of the, like, the defenses are going down, whether it's a you know, five down base or nickel or, you know, dime and all that stuff. And I think our defense, you know, runs a good bit of all of it. And we have that camp. And I think that's a huge thing for us and how we kind of like set our system of like our declarations and all that stuff. So I think, um, you know, our defense does a, a great job of like prepping us in, in general, but also like, like our like our show team like that week they do a great job of like making sure we get those looks that are unscouted or or having um you know different things that they could do so i think um just bringing up those and bringing up different variables like that that's a huge thing for us and um you know we've adapted along this whole season too and you know and that's the the whole thing is just to keep peaking you know and, and at the right time and december football is the, the best the best kind of football so um but that's where like true like you know championship teams start well, uh, Dan Quinn was talking today about uh, coming into this. I'm sorry, I'm just going to call it the final third. Uh, in this final third of the season, that um, he he is trying to help identify uh, on a weekly basis what the defense as a whole needs to do this week to get better, and what each guy has to do to continue to improve. Stefan Gilmore was here with us just a few weeks ago, and I was struck by the fact that he said the, uh, the good teams that he's been on have, this is the, the time of the year when they really start to get it in gear. And you've already played two thirds of the season by now. So what things individually and as a group of uh, five of you, what, what things do you think you could Put your finger on and say we can we can get better at that. Yeah, I think um, I think it can. It's 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 more so a consistency, and I think you know don't beat yourself, whether it's you know penalties or you know just doing your job, like plain and simple about like you know where you're going, like making sure we like we see the deck and like see where we're going and basing it, you know what your job is, but just honestly just how all eleven on the same page and eliminating pre-snap penalties and. You know, that's the biggest thing is about don't be, you know, don't have that in the way of, like, you know, you're competing against them. Don't compete back at yourself. There was a lot of concerns from other people about how good this offensive line could be, and that was just because of the lack of continuity. You guys had battled injuries. Um, but now that you guys have gotten that continuity together, about five, six games of playing together, how much of do you feel like this is y'all's best? Or if not, how much better do you feel like this offensive line can be? I think every week, like, we've been growing. And I think, um, you know, this is a different lineup, obviously, like, than last year and stuff. But, like, every single week gotten better and better and better. And, like, you know, full 100%, um, you know, like, you know, we had this last year. Like, Tyler moved inside. And, and like, we, you know, we kept working on, like, just building that chemistry and that chemistry. And, and um, but know that the continuity, even with, like, the offense, too, and, like, the consistency that um, we're having. And, you know, whether it's in the run game, pass game, play action or whatever, like, you know, some games are different than others, and like you know, you know, yesterday was more run than maybe pass, or you know, more is more balanced, or some games it's more pass. But like, you know, that's the beauty of our offense is that you know we take what they give us, and um, and we 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 hit, you know, we just keep like keep hitting it brick by brick by brick, you know, down the field. And the big thing is like the consistency about you know getting first downs and like being efficient on first and second down to make it make, you know, manageable and third down. And like, you know, our percentages in third down are going really up and really high. So that's that, a big that, thing. That, um, uh, that consistency involves uh, communication. It's been several weeks now where you have been able to communicate with the same two people on either side of you. How much uh, is that a contributing factor to the efficiency of what your group is doing. I mean, I, th I think it's huge. I think, you know, um, with me and Dak being on the same page and, you know, that that's always at a premium, you know, and um, especially like the old line specifically, you know, whether it's, you know, pass pro, but also like having the running back too. I think you're always having that at a premium and you're always making sure everyone's on the same page no matter what, um, you know, before that ball snapped. And, um, you know, you just want to put yourself in the best position possible, like set yourself up, for, you know, for success and don't, you know, you're always staying on top of the little things. And I think that's the biggest part. You know, we even came out of meetings today and, you know, like, you know, I had a chance to speak with just making sure we're, we're on the on the small details because those add up over time, you know, and, um, and just like keep your foot on the gas. 
You kind of touched on it. A lot of guys are willing to do the dirty work. You have the running backs that are involved in pass pro, tight ends, um, even Michael Gallup every now and then. How would you assess the selfish selflessness uh, within this team, and do you feel like that's what makes this offense so special? Yeah, it's huge. I think you know the, the chemistry that we have as individuals and our personalities, and as a group, I think you know we're really you know gelling at the right time, and um, and I think it's you know goes back to even like camp and like how you know how hard we grinded then to be you know set us up to where we are now, like you know, and I think you know all 11 like I said before and like we're all we're all trying to you know better ourselves but like the unselfish plays whether it's like you know we watched one in the team meeting and about um the Seattle game and like Michael Gallup had like a little like drag route and then CD was behind him but like Michael Gallup took that safety pulled him in and then he, you know dotted CD for a touchdown over the top and like those are huge plays that you know you know some people might not notice but you know in the in the meeting like we're like you know we're, we're clapping up for MG you know because that was a huge play in the game and um, but the unselfishness is at a premium too. I think uh, you know that's been a, that's been a huge thing. And um, you know we have the you know tight ends, running backs. You know they're stepping up. You know TP's play. You know yesterday against um, in two minute when uh, Brandon Cooks had that you know big deep ball. Like TP stepped up and got you know that piece of that linebacker. And he's he's doing a lot of you know dirty work with the linebacker blitzes and stuff like that. So like we got a lot of guys you know that are very very unselfish, but you know putting you know themselves on the line. And like we really appreciate that. You, you mentioned balance, and I made the point earlier in the game yesterday, early in the game, that ba balance used to mean 50-50 and doesn't mean that anymore. It now means where, you know, the number of running plays can see the number of passing plays. And that's not at all what you did. Y you, you approached it completely differently last night. Was that by design or was that a function of how the game unfolded? Yeah, I think a little bit was um – a little bit of both, I think. I mean, I think you kind of see what the defense is giving you, and, you know, you test them on – you know, we tested them on the edges right away and, you know, went a little bit more air. But then also, like, you know, the run game started hitting them in certain ways, and we kept the foot on the gas, and that set up the play action. And then, you know, we went two minute like, at halftime, and then, the, you know, they're exposed, and it's like, you know, they have to really play honest in whether they're going to play cover one or shell, you know, cover two, or whatever that might be. But – you know, you really, you could tell you, like, we, you know, you can really stress them out when you have both of them going. And if they have to you know, guard perimeters like, you know, Turpin, CD, like, and those aren't even, like, you know, you know, we don't have, I mean, that's not even talking about TP and Rico, you know, so. But it sets everything up. I think that's, like, the biggest part, um, how fundamentally balanced we are. And um, McCarthy does a great job of, like, you know, setting us up for success, you know. One more thing before we take our first break, because it is Victory Monday. <laughs> Victory Monday, and uh, and you mentioned penalties, which is a really that's a strange thing in the league. No one knows who's <laughs> what's what, but um, Babe Laufenberg and I both commented that it had been a very long time since either of us had heard anyone called for clipping, <laughs> and I'm not sure what you did was what I grew up understanding clipping to be. When was the last time you got called for clipping? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never in your life? In school? Never. No, no. Mm. Did you, I mean, having looked at it, do you, do you know what they saw, what they thought they saw? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure we're going to have a, a kind of little tutorial about, you know, what's clean and what's not. But I think, um, you know, talking to, you know, we'll talk to our, our special teams coach, McCarthy, we'll have like, we always like go through like the penalties of the week and we'll get like an assessment on it. Um, um, but we do a pretty good, honest job about, like, what we can do better. And, like, maybe um, even if it was a close call for the official, like, let, let's not make it close. You know, let's make it make it cleaner. Um, but, yeah, no, never been clipping. And, you know, I thought I got my head in front. But, you know, it could be in, from bird's eye view. You know, like, you know, everyone's human. And so, I, you know, it's kind of tough. Um, it was a tough call to take. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, like, you know, you can't change it. And it, it is what it is. And you just got to battle. And... I had to do that. <laughs> can, can, can you repeat uh, in public the thought that went through your head when you heard him say, clipping number 63? Well, at first I thought it was a high-low because I was like, I didn't even think of clipping. But there was no high. There was no, nobody no, high. I, you know, and I was like, you know, I asked Tyler right away. I was like, you touch him? He goes, no. And I was like, what they call? And I didn't, until I got off on the sidelines, that's when they said clipping. And I was like, what? You know? <laughs> so I was like. 
Uh, I was more confused, but um, but yeah, and then you know, you know, we talked about it today, and you know whether you know they called it right or wrong doesn't really matter. You know, at this point, you know, you know, you, at the, in the game, you can't change it. Like I said before, and you just got to move on, and you got to move on quick. Um, that's the biggest thing. And um, but yeah, you know, unfortunate. Um, but you know, I, again, I've never heard clipping. <laughs> I mean, what's your understanding of what clipping is? You know that we had a talk today about it. it's when you like cut him from the backside, like if you hit him in the backside. But um, but, but isn't there? There was always like a a, a space, an area uh, within X amount of the line of scrimmage. I mean, yeah, you can't. You and can't in go, the tackle yeah, box, yeah, maybe yeah, where clipping you, yeah, you where clipping was legal. Right. I think you can't go outside of the tight end box, but clipping is when you're cutting him from the backside. And I had my head in front of his knee, like his, his thigh board. So, again. I don't know where he was seeing it, but at the same time, you know, it is what it is. Well, thank you for uh, letting us all <laughs> hear the term clipping again, and it doesn't matter now, uh, but it was an interesting conversation point. We appreciate everyone who has come in to join us at Sidecar Social uh, at, in the Star District tonight on the Cowboys Hour. Thank you wherever you're listening on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Thank you where and whenever you're streaming on DallasCowboys.com. The little boxes are cameras, so wave. There you go. And uh, Tyler Biotish, the Cowboys Center, is our guest tonight. We'll be right back. to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco on Victory Monday. Brad Sham and Nicole Hutchinson, our special guest star. Tyler Biotish, the Cowboys Center, and Nicole, who, who brings us this 
Cowboys Hour. Luke Casey, uh, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Shout out to Luke Casey. There we go. Uh, so, uh, as you get into this stretch, wh what a difference from your rookie year, first of all, <laughs> right? I mean, that was that was just sad chaos. Yeah, it's tough. Starting from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's just double-digit wins three years in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, do you find yourself uh, less tired as December cranks up when you are in a playoff race like this? No, I mean, you know, I think – I think every year we've had it, we've had that, you know, that Thanksgiving, you know, that right after that Thanksgiving game, we have that one, and then we have, like, a little, like, more of, like, a little mini bye week, right? So it's, like, that Thursday to that next following Sunday, you know. So I think, you know, we've always had that. So I think, you know, that's kind of the, that your second kind of bye that, you you know, you really gather yourself and you get your body right, your mind right. Um, but, no, I mean, not, re not really tired. You're, you're fresh as a daisy? Yeah, I actually did feel really fresh that game. No, 100%. No, I mean, yeah, you're, like, in-season healthy. You know, we always joke around, like, you know, you're in-season healthy. You got your nicks and bruises, all this stuff. But, like, at the same time, like, you know, you want to just keep, you know, keep building or keep, you know, keep stacking those days where, you know, you get more recovery. And McCarthy does a great job of, like, you know, in that three-game stretch, you know, uh, 11, 11 days or three games in 11 days, uh, he's, he's really conscious about uh, making sure we're, our bodies are fresh and that we're ready to go and um, – so, no, I mean, I, I do feel really good. I really do. Was, uh, there, so. was there anything that you did outside of, uh, you know, the recovery things that McCarthy had? Because I know Stefan yeah. said that he got, like, extra massages and things like yeah. that. Yeah, you do your body work. Um, you know, we got massages, cold tubs. Um, you know, we got, like, a steam room at the, at the facility, um, saunaing, and um, uh, we got Normatex, so, like, compression. <laughs> Um, so all that stuff, you know, and that that and that that that's dividends, yeah. you know, you know, going down the week, and I always think it's like you're always making like a self deposit every single day throughout the week, you know, starting from Monday today, and you just keep doing it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you build it all up, and then on Sunday, you know, you you know, you're fresh. Um, I was as you were talking about the spa and all of the things. Was it like that at Wisconsin? Um, we, we, we had some, some stuff that was similar, um, you know, and, uh, we had, uh, we had a sauna and cold tub and stuff like that. Um, we didn't, we didn't maybe have like maybe all the resources that we have here, but I think it was uh, pretty similar. Um, we've taken like, um, once I got here, I've taken recovery to a, like a new level for me and, uh, to really like, you know, as much as you're in the building, it's a good thing. Right. So, uh, um, but yeah, I definitely, uh, utilize my time in there and, uh, Hey, you know, that's the, that's the name of the game is availability. You know, you always want to keep your body fresh. And was Barry Alvarez the AD during yeah. any of your time there? Yeah, he was. He was. Most of the time? The whole time? The whole time. The whole time. Yeah. He's retired now, right? He is. He is. So Barry Alvarez, for those who don't know, one of the great uh, college football coaches of the last few decades and then uh, administrators and OPS, the grandfather of Jake Ferguson, the Cowboys tight end was jake particularly geeked because grandpa was in town this past <laughs> week oh yeah he's come out a couple he's come out uh, has he a, a couple times yeah and he's come out like last year a, a lot too so um we've got to catch up multiple times you know and uh you know it's always it's always fun you know it's coming from my college days and you know seeing him in the building and you know, now i'm seeing him in our building you know and it's cool that uh he comes out and supports you know jake um but also um you know bringing bringing that culture that he kind of represents too and you got the you know get to talk to him about you know and the history of you know wisconsin sometimes and all that stuff so you know he's a great guy you know great great uh, true legend you know what were some things that you took away from barry you know i i didn't really have him as a coach yeah um but it was more so of just like who he is mm -hmm. um and you kind of like you know you found the fundamentals of like a true very humble guy you know down to earth um kind of guy but um you know, he's funny. Oh, he's funny. Um, but, no, I think that's kind of where Ferg gets it, you know. like Ferg, I was going to say. You know, Ferg's a good yeah. no, does, awesome. does Ferg have some of his personality? Oh, yeah. No, I think, you know, Ferg is he's, he's dynamic. Personalities <laughs> is an interesting subject to me. Uh, you, you clearly blossomed going into your second and, and third years. The first year, I think, was a little overwhelming. It can be for a lot of first-year players. Plus, it was the COVID year, right? Um, Jake has never 
seem to be sh particularly shy, no. but he's you could just see him growing, oh, at, yeah. right, as a person and a and a player. Um, talk to us about him a little bit, and then maybe some of the other personalities that are kind of coming out and growing up right in front of our eyes. Yeah, I think you know I think a lot of the personalities came with obviously like opportunity, you know, and um, you know, but Ferg he's always been. Uh, He's outspoken and confident, and you know that, you know he, uh, he's he's one of those guys that like, you know he he's gonna go out for his moment. He, he's always in the present moment. You know he's gonna give it his best shot. You know, and um, whether it's his you know rookie year or or whatever, and because I had him because he was a year behind me in college, so you know I saw him his redshirt year and like um, the next year he played, and I got to play for with him for a year, and we were actually roommates in college. Really. So, uh, yeah, so we were roommates at college for two years, and, um, and it was funny um, uh, just to see, like, you know, his growth, but, like, his tenacity in, at Wisconsin, and, uh, you know, we get to do that, in the, you know, in the NFL on the same team, you know, so, like, that's, uh, that's obviously, like, um, you know, it's great, you know, for our relationship, and, um, but just to see him grow, but also, like, you know, Hendershot, Sean McEwen, uh, Scooney, like, all those guys, um, you know, just how they're ascending, you know, and, and those are big. Um, moments, but even, um, you know, you know, TP taking over, you know, and, uh, um, you know, Rico and, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're guys that are just like continually growing and, um, you know, it's good, really good to see that, but also their personality is like, you know, Dak always says, in, you know, how just be yourself, just be yourself, be the best version of yourself and everything else will take it, take care of itself. Just be your, be your best at your best and everything will take care of itself. And, um, I truly think, you know, we do show our personalities and, uh, you know, and, you know, Ferg's, a, he's a funny dude. And I think he gets it from Barry. <laughs> he got really from Barry? Yeah, and his brother, Joe. <laughs> so, so one of the things I noticed from the Seattle game, when you look back at the clips and he makes the first down mm -hmm. and Jamal Adams is in his face and, and yeah. I think it was uh, number six who was in between yeah. him and then yeah. Adams pushed his – and – and guess who that was in a white shirt <laughs> coming in and pulling them apart, making sure yeah. that Ferg got his say, and, and yet the whole thing didn't get out of hand. Yeah. But you go looking for that stuff, I think. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. No, I think, um, no, you always, I think just covering the ball, you're kind of putting yourself in the position, um, you know, for anything, whether, you know, fumble or, you know, maybe take a hit off a guy or, like, finishing, you know, pushing the pile or whatever, but... You know, when you see a guy get hit like that and, you, you know, you see him talking um, right after the play, like, you know, you're going to let Ferg say his thing. And um, <laughs> but once he's, you know, once there's a scuffle, like, that's my moment, you know, like that's my moment where I'm stepping in. And um, well, I mean, you had to travel a little distance to yeah, get there. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, right yeah, next was, to it. yeah, no, it was like, you know, a 10 year gain or something like that. Um, but no, I knew it was coming once he put the first down, like once he put it up, I'm like, all right. Here we go. <laughs> this is on. <laughs> no, so, but, yeah, no, but that's, like, I think that's the, you know, we always talk about, you know, you know, pure-ass attitude, you know, and I think that's the, the way we operate, you know, and, like, you see guys even, like, yesterday, like, when Ferd caught one over the middle, like, you got, you know, CD and Brandon and all those guys blocking downfield, and, like, and then uh, we're coming in, too, because, like, we know how important those extra yards do add up, you know, and, um, and it could be, you know, for situational football, too. So, you know, if we get tackled at the 40 versus the 30, like, there's different play calls for each of those, you know. And, like, um, we have a different um, – we always want to, you know, get the most yards possible, right? So, you know, we're always trying to cover the ball and everything. But, um, but no, we're always, we're always in for a scuffle, man. Like, that's the best – that's the beauty about you know, football is that, you know, that attitude that it brings out. And, like, and that's when your true personality does come out, too, I think. And um, – but that's the, for the love of the game as well, you know. And I – I enjoy that. When you see Ferg make plays like hurdling over guys, and <laughs> he d he's done it before, but yeah. does it surprise you when he does makes big plays like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, he didn't he, – you know, I, I can't really remember, like, too much in college. Yeah. But, like, I saw the one picture online today, and I'm like, man, he yeah. got up. I was like, Couldn't wow. you see that coming? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you do it two games in a row, you think, yeah. like – No, there was – the way no, he <laughs> was running – and that the way that guy was coming over, and as I'm as I'm describing him running, I'm thinking to myself, he's going over that guy. <laughs> There's no doubt. 
This yeah. is this is like a show horse getting ready to jump a hurdle. <laughs> he is going over that guy. Yeah. That didn't surprise you. The ones it? that surprised me are like the quick one, two steps yeah. and he's up. And I'm like, man, you can gather yourself. What was your reaction? Cover the ball. Because, <laughs> like, you know, you don't know how he's going to land. So you're like, shoot, I got to get over there, yeah. you know. But, um, but no, man, he's uh, he's been balling, man. And um, But no, man, he's been making people miss and making people look funny on Instagram <laughs> and on social media, you know, stuff. But. But man, man, he has he has some hops for you sure. You know, the great thing about that is that when he did it the first time last year, mm-hmm. and everybody got excited, and I remember asking him what you know what were you thinking when you and he said, cover the ball, <laughs> and then he said that was dumb. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> well, I guess that went out the window <laughs> with Victory Monday. That's what <laughs> where it went out the window with. And uh, Nicole, who who else brings us uh, the Cowboys Hour? Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day. My bad. When you wear your Cowboys jersey, Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Tyler Biotish, the Cowboys centers our guest tonight. We'll be right back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson. Welcome back to Sidecar Social in the Star District on Victory Monday on the Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham with Nicole Hutchinson and our special guest, Cowboys All-Star Center Tyler Biotish. You you looked in the Pro Bowl games last year, you looked like you were having fun. (laughs) It was a lot of fun. No, it was great. Would you... Was it better than, you'll never know, because it'll never go back. 
would you rather play a game or would you rather do what you guys did? Yeah, I mean, I never experienced, you know, obviously a game. You know, I've, I've talked to Zach a couple times and Tyron about, like, you know, what was it like in the past and how much has changed. And, like, you know, we were playing flag football and I snapped the ball and took a knee. <laughs> so, um, different, different. But, um, no, being able to talk, you know, to the guys around the league and um, get to know those guys and, you um, you know, talk about ball, you know, just, you know, hang out. and. Um, That's the important part of it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. No, I'm 100%, you know, just camaraderie. Like, um, but we had a lot of guys go down, you know, down to Vegas. Uh, you know, you had Micah, Trayvon, me, Zach. Yeah, what a shock that a bunch of guys <laughs> went to Las Vegas. Uh, no, but I But mean, no, on the team. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, well, you're going to have more, you know. Yeah. You're going to have some more. Uh, do you think about that at all? Is that a – that you know, that, that – Pro Bowl is such a funny thing. For as long as I can remember, nobody wants to play in the game, but everyone wants to make the Pro Bowl <laughs> because it's a recognition right. that right. you're among the best at your right. position. Was it something you thought about before last year? Were you surprised? And how important is it to you now? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you always have, you know, individual goals and you always have team goals. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in, like, self-affirmation and, um, you know, writing down and envisioning them. And, you know, you know obviously – you want to be notarized as, you know, the best of what you do. And I think, you know, that's – if that's the highest achievement, that that's – you know, that's what I'm going for. And then that's why, I like, you know, I always – you know, you strive for that to be the best that you possibly could be. And, you know, hopefully in the other people's eyes, that's that's the best, right? Or you're learning from other people how to do things differently and all that stuff on film. So, I mean, with technique and all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, definitely, um, you know, definitely was excited, you know, when I got the phone call and everything like that. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, you want to be recognized for that, but I think the ultimate goal is, you know, to win a Super Bowl. And that's, you know, obviously, like, in front of, you know, all of it is, like, we want to win a fuck, you know, we want to win a Super Bowl. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, hey, Luka Doncic can do it. And, you yeah, know, right. Beatish can do it, right? <laughs> um, uh, it, that self-actualization, visualization, writing down goals, uh, very interesting to me. How, if at all, has uh, what you have visualized and written down changed by lining up next to Zach Martin for four years? Yeah, I think it, I think it's big. I think, you know, for me, it's like, you know, in pregame, you know, I'm, I'm listening to a meditation, you know, I'm getting my mind clear um, for what I'm about to do, but in the meditation, I'll, I'll have, like, different things of, like, what I'm focusing on this week and, like, the matchups I have and, like, how we're going to fit this or that. Um, but honestly, it's just like for that stuff, like with who I'm working with, it's more so, you know, that's in practice, that's building throughout the week, you know, that's um, building the camaraderie. And then it kind of goes to, you know, McCarthy has a you know, big thing for us is, you know, given that 24 hours of like for you, you know, it's all you, you know, you can clear your mind, um, get your body right, whatever you need. And then, you know, we, we, we show up on game day, like, you know, we're ready to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the self, and visualization and you know self-affirmation that's I think that's huge you know because mm. you know you're setting yourself in the program of who you are on the field and that's a whole nother different version of yourself so um, but it's the true version of you know who you are on that field so I think um, just to get your mindset you know to go out there and to be the best of your ability of that version I think it does you, you should take time you should take time to visualize that and um, you know Schottenheimer um, you know, Coach Schottenheimer, you know, the last game, you know, it with Seattle, he kept coming over by us. He was like, expect to win, expect to win. And then, you know, like, that's a huge thing, too, about just, like, in, in your, psychologically in your mind, like, you know, we might be down or whatever, but, like, you know, expect to win, you know, every single week. Expect to win, you know, every single matchup, you know, like. Um, but know their tendencies, and obviously, like, you know, you want to execute at the highest level. And, um, but you're always learning. You're always growing. And it's never perfect, but, like, you chase it. You chase it. So, um, but yeah, the standard you hold for yourself is really high. And I saw in training camp where you said that you want to be the best leader that you can be for yourself and for this offensive line. How do you feel like you have pretty much done this at this point of the season? Yeah, no, I think um, I think I've done a pretty good job. But, you know, again, like I it, you never want to get complacent. Um, you always want to have a growth mindset. And, um, you know, you know, a person I lean on a lot is Zach and um, and Dak and, and, and talking to them about you know, how do they do things, you know, and like, you know, how, what do you feel about this or this or like, 
you know, how do you want me to go about that, you know, this or that. So I think, um, but lean on them of just, you know, learning, you know, you know, when you step more stepping into that role, you know, you want to, you want to do, do things the right way. And, um, and that's a big part of this, you know, this winning culture that we have here. And I think, um, and it's more so about, you know, creating more leaders on the team, you know, about leadership in general, but you want everyone to have that same mindset, you know, um, but yeah, no, I think it's a, we've done a really good job. And, but like every single week we come out of a game, it's always a growth mindset, you know, whether or not, you know, a leader saying it or not, it's, it's more so like all of us, like we are leaders of men, like Mike Solari, offensive line coach <laughs> says every day, we are leaders of men. So, um, and we, t we do take that, you know, personal of like our, our craft and our ability and our, uh, our film study and all that stuff and every detail. So. Um, but yeah, no, it's always, you're always learning about different things and you're always, uh, trying to be the best at it. So what were some of those conversations with Dak and Zach? Um, they, they were great. I mean, just to go about things about, you know, whether it's in game or off on the sideline or how to go about this or that, or, you know, and, um, but, but they're great. I mean, um, but I think it's more, you know, some stuff that you have to experience it, um, for the first time and some stuff you can, you can learn from it through practice or like, you know, if we have to pick up the tempo here or there or or how to, you know, talk to someone after, you know, this play or whatever. Um, but, no, those, those are big things. And even, like, like I'm still learning, you know, I still learn from Zach and Dak. And, um, but anytime I have a question, I'm, I'm, like, a, I'm like a sponge. Like, I'm, not, I'm always trying to get information, you know. I'm trying to always better myself to have my best version out there so, like, I don't live with regret, you know. That's, like, the biggest thing is, like, you know, I always want to come in and, you know, be my best, so. Something that Tyler Smith said um, earlier in the season, he had mentioned that, Mike Solari allows you guys to be player led. How much has that kind of paid off? A lot, a lot. I think, um, you know, he's, he's given the voice, I think, um, you know, to all of us really. Yeah. And, um, but knowing about like how, how good we can be mm -hmm. and or how great we can be. Um, but no, I mean, you know, that, that consistent energy that he brings, I think amplified like in the, the, the room in general upon like who he is as a person and, mm -hmm. and having that growth mindset, but like knowing that each and every week we will better ourselves and like we will be the best versions of ourselves and um, knowing like what our potential really is. Um, but yeah, no, you know, he, he does bring the energy, you know, <laughs> and he's on the sideline and coach uh, Chin Young, he's on the sidelines and, you know, he, they, you know, it's a ball of energy, man. Like, and, and they do it the right way. Um, and they're always, uh, you know, trying to make it, crystal 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 clear for us whether you know we're talking about film or getting what we want of for this or that you know on our ipads and stuff and you know and, and they're always helping us out and so man like can't say enough about them for real mike is mike different than joe philbin in that respect yeah, they, they have different um ways. different personalities 100 yeah, percent. yeah they have di they have different uh, personalities and um but every every coach does right and um but yeah i mean you know, I, I can talk the same way about what, what, what you know Joe did the last you know two years and stuff like that. So it's like, but I think, um, but you know, being player led was different. I think in, in regards of like you know really like you know having having the room and like you know doing some different things. But like in in the same stuff, it's uh, it's kind of different with like techniques and stuff like that. But like you're gonna get that when you have new coaches and stuff like that. But I think um, you know you know we have like that in in the room. We'll we'll talk more about you know what's like kind of the theme of the week or like, you know, we'll sit down and like coach, like so I will have like a cup of coffee. Like, what does that mean to you? You know, we just talked about this, this, or this, and um, we'll go around the room and like, we'll talk about, you know, what, what that message meant that we had this week or um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really cool. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the kind of, it keeps you accountable because it's like every, everyone's speaking up in the room too. So, I mean, every old lineman in the room, like we're speaking up and we're, we're uh, talking about, you know, what this, you know, message means to them and all that. And, but it's, uh, it's a lot, it's more voices in the room that are speaking. So uh, that camaraderie builds, the chemistry builds, and uh, you get to know uh, one another better. So it's huge. When you Ty look Does oh. Tyron talk a lot in those meetings? <laughs> <laughs> we get him to talk. We get him to smirk a little bit here and there. You know, it's a, wants to, no, I'm just kidding. But no, no, he does talk, you know, and he does give his uh, thoughts and opinions and stuff like that. And, um, but no, again, a great leader of, men you know prime example you know how many years he's done it and you know he's talking about like the matchups and what he sees to help you know vice versa what you know when when the three like for example like yesterday like they were com him and terrence were communicating what they had with each other and all that stuff and but yeah no i mean he does a great job a great job 
when you look at a guy like Tyler Smith, who's made a drastic second year jump, um, moving from left tackle to uh, inside, what has impressed you the most about his growth in just about a year? Yeah, I think uh, his versatility, mm -hmm. for one, to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, especially to, at playing at a high level, but also, um, you know, his his acknowledgement of the playbook and his growth and how he ascended, like, into this year mm -hmm. and really uh, took ownership of, um, you know, just becoming more of a, um, like, off of, like, film study, like, like in tip, picking up tips and tendencies and knowing how to, uh, how to like, you know, block differently because mm -hmm. it you know tackled the guard that's a big that's a big yeah. difference you know you're versing maybe th 300 plus pound people <laughs> versus like 250 maybe you know whatever but um end up but like i think uh i think the biggest thing is the ability he has and the, the gift of athleticism and he uses it to the maximum and um you know he's in strain you know he can you know recover like his recoverability is out of this world you know and but he plays long he plays physically he plays demeanor with a great finish um, can't say enough great things about him honestly our guest is Tyler Biotish the Cowboys all-star center we are uh, at uh, sidecar social in the star district in Frisco do we have who else is bringing us this uh, show Nicole Papa John's it's big it's good and it's only for Cowboys fans the Cowboys special from the Cowboys and Papa John's a large one-topping pizza for only $9.99. Order today, better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, the official pizza of the Dallas Cowboys. Audience questions for Tyler Biotish on Victory Monday when we come back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons. Victory Monday, 
Victory Monday on the Cowboys Hour at Sidecar Social. Brad Sham with Nicole Hutchison and Tyler Biotish. And, um, and yeah, we'll be back here next week, too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, does um, the Christmas season distract me personally? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, not really. No, honestly, uh, you just see a lot more lights in your neighborhood. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's always like, you know, you see a lot of, like, you know, Christmas stuff around, like the facility, and um, you're doing more. Um, you got to get to do more gift giving, obviously, and, um, you know, we do. We do well, what a great philosophy. You get to do more gift giving. Yeah. What a great philosophy. Yeah, no, I mean, it's great. It's great. No, uh, we do this uh, one. It's uh, I forgot what it's called. It's like angels. Uh, the angel back. tree. The angel tree. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's great. I mean, Emily does a great job of uh, giving us opportunities every Tuesday to go volunteer, and we went to do like oh. children's hospital visits. I got to wear like a Santa hat and like you know put a, a smile on a kid's face, and um, that means the world to me, you know, and especially you know what they're going through. And um, but it just gives you a perspective, right? And um, you know, to really uh, um, you know. It, like bump up your gratitude of uh, the ability that you have and the opportunity you have to go play um, and kind of like work, but like really play a game that you love to do. And um, so, uh, but to also inspire, you know, kids around the world and um, to give them hope about what they're going through and everything like that. So, I mean, um, great opportunities obviously come with it, but I think um, at the same rate, um, it's not really a distraction. It's more of an exciting time. You know, it really is. And, um, and that's when a lot of families in town, too, and um, it's great. How has the uh, quarterback shown his gratitude to the offensive <laughs> lineman in your first three years? That was great. <laughs> no, it was great. Um, no, we got some, uh, we got some gift cards. Um, uh, it's a four like season. A, Can you tell us to wear? A big, yeah, yeah, yeah we were a big. <laughs> yeah, we had some uh, gift cards at Four Season Hotel. Oh. Um, okay. We had some Jordan shoes. Um, we had some, uh, we had some. High end liquor. Um, it was it was great. What you know? Jordan shoes did you get? I think it was the best ones. Of the I'm not a big collector in okay. shoes, but um, <laughs> they were the ones that no one else had. <laughs> so they were exclusive. <laughs> yeah, so they're great. Um, but yeah, no, uh, you know we get to wear them on game day and everything. And um, but yeah, no, uh, you know Dak treats us very well, um, and uh, you know we'll be able to go over, you know, have online dinners at his house and. Um, you know, really get together and, uh, you know, build camaraderie. And um, he's great, man. He really is. Let's take some questions from the audience. <laughs> Good evening, Tyler. My name is Rambo. Great win yesterday, by the way. Thank you. So you're surrounded by great coaches and great players that I know offer a great support system to make you into a great player. Does Travis Frederick reach out to you and give you his support? Yeah, I mean, we, we connected uh, in the in the pre-draft, uh, or once I got drafted, um, and that's when I started uh, being involved in his uh, foundation and everything. And, um, you know, I've talked to him a couple times on some fits and, like, um, what, he, what he used to do and, like, all that stuff. And he kind of told me, like, kind of his process of, like, his recovery and stuff like that and also of, like, what he did, like, with Zach and the guards um, about getting the fit and like how he would be confident going to games and stuff like that or like reach blocks and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, anytime I've uh, ever reached out, he's always had an answer for me and um, he's a really great dude, man. Uh, um, very, very grateful for who he is as a person as, as too. And I, I think it's kind of cool. I didn't get to play with him on the field, but I got to, you know, be a part of, you know, his other team that he was on, you know, with the Blocking Hunger Foundation. Right. Um, and, you know, that, and that's kind of set everything up with perspective for me, too. So it was great. You know, he's a great guy, man. Yeah, he's an unusual guy. Thanks, Rambo. <laughs> how you doing, sir? My, name is, my name is Tony. Uh, many years ago, I was at a show similar to this and, uh, when Nate Newton was playing. And uh, somebody asked him uh, who was the, uh, one of the toughest linemen on the team. And he's, he had mentioned how uh, Larry Allen and Eric Williams at the time were two of the nastiest, grimy linemen that you ever met. Yeah. Do we have that, and who are they? We are all them. 100%, all five. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. 
<laughs> what a great answer. <laughs> All right. My name's Larry. Um, How you doing, Larry? Doing good. As far as uh, when you first came on with the team and uh, you were getting to know the players, as far as uh, the center that you replaced, Khan is he can be Joe Looney. What was the funniest thing that made you laugh and you still keep in touch with him? With Joe? Yes. Oh, Joe Looney. Oh. Oh. Okay, no. Um, Did you play with Joe? Yeah, so my first year, so he started the year, and, um, you know, I came in, I, I came in for him when he got, when he got hurt, um, and I started some games, but, no, I, I was like a sponge with Joe because we, we didn't have OTAs that year, so that was the COVID year, so we, we came in, and we were doing everything from Zoom, and it's not really, like, hands-on, like, going through walkthroughs and all that stuff. It's all on a piece of paper, right? So, um, but, yeah, no, I learned a lot from Joe. Um, throughout that whole year um but man he's a funny dude no, he's a great he, but he's a great he's a great guy no he really is um but um but no you you, you just learn from his experience and um he was, he was really open to it and he was a very um very big team player in regards of um you know you know a rookie coming in and um wanting to learn um but um but no he he really ran it uh that year and um you know when i when i stepped in when he was hurt um but no, it was a great, it was a great year, and uh, he's a great guy. And uh, you know, when he comes around, uh, the star, uh, I think he was coaching high school football. Yeah. Recently, so anytime we get to see him, you know, it's always a blast. You know, we always want to say hi, and catch up, and see how he's doing and everything. And um, but I, yeah, I can't say enough great things about him. We've got 30 seconds. What what went through your mind the first time you heard? Here we go. <laughs> <sighs> get set. <laughs> no, uh, get set. Get set. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's taken off, and it's got take, a song, and it's yeah. got a song, and it might have more before you're all done. <laughs> Tyler Biotish, everybody, the Cowboys Pro Bowl center, and uh, Sunday afternoon in Buffalo, and next Monday back here so on Cowboys Hour. My buds Hour. and I are at a Buffalo Wild. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?